Hello. Hello. My name is Stephen Hall. I'm going to talk about the law of attraction. Before I do that, I want to say a massive thank you for Dig uh, and all the guys that have put this together because bringing like minded people together, that's a tremendous amount of energy. Now, I am going to take advantage of that energy and we're going to do some guided meditations a little bit later so that you can start to manifest some things. The law of attraction is the idea that we are the creators of our reality. So things that appear to be external from us, we are somehow making those things happen. Now, not many people are doing this consciously. This is something that happens at a subconscious level. It appears that it's happening to us, but we can't stop it. So what I'm gonna talk about over the next hour is how to take this process from something that is subconscious and it appears to happen to us, something that is very conscious and very deliberate so that we can decide what we want, what we wanna be, what we wanna do and what we wanna have. And then we can focus on that and we can manifest that in our lives. So the first question I've got to ask you guys is what do you want? Some of the ways, sorry? Happiness, brilliant example. Some of the ways that I've used this in the past is to manifest physical things. I've used it to manifest experiences. Uh, I've used this, uh, the techniques I'm gonna be teaching you to manifest emotions like happiness, that's a great example. Confidence. One of the ways that I use this more than anything else is to manifest into my life a lesson that's gonna take me from where I am now to the next step of my spiritual journey of like a light being having a human experience. So that could be a book, it could be a YouTube video, it could be one of you guys that I talk to over the next few days that's gonna give me some kind of insight or wisdom that's gonna take me to that next level. So that's the way I use this more than anything. So I want you all to have a good think of something that you wanna manifest. It doesn't matter what it is, it can be something just material, it could be a lump of cash if that's what you want, it can be anything. If you haven't got anything, then what I'd like you to do, the C5 event that we've got going on tonight with Audrey, if you've got nothing to focus on manifesting, then manifest an experience tonight and we can have a little bit of a group energy doing that. As I go through the talk, I'm gonna be giving you lots of different techniques and tricks that you can use that are gonna help that manifestation. So I'm gonna ask you to bring that thing back and then focus on it as we start doing this. And it's gonna save us wasting those little meditations. <coughs> so I wanna tell you first of all a little bit I have um, how I got started with the law of attraction, how I got into this. And this is going back around about 15 years, almost to the time where I knew Gary. And I was a hypnotherapist at the time. I was fascinated by anything to do with the paranormal. And I used to go into my local library and just sit there and read any book that they had on psychology, parapsychology, mind, body, spirit, all of that. But back then, that section was quite small. And I'm quite a slow reader, so I just read the thin books. And I went in the library one day, and I was thinking, I want to step my life up to the next level. I want whatever is going to take me to the next part of my evolution. So I closed my eyes. I did a little bit of meditation. I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't know anything about the law of attraction. And I just relaxed and I asked for guidance. And I was stood in front of the shelf and I opened my eyes really slowly and I expected that all the books would be kind of out of focus a little bit, so I'd be soft gaze. And then one of them would jump out at me and there'd be a little bit of clarity or it seemed a little bit brighter or more colorful than the others. And then I was gonna get that book out of the library. So I opened my eyes really slowly. There was a book on the top shelf, a great big fat hardback book that I'd always ignored because it looked really heavy going. And as I opened my eyes, that book toppled forward. Hit the floor, the wooden library. Everybody looked at me and I went bright red because it just looked like I'd dropped this thing. I picked it up and I knew right there and then that I had to read this book. I didn't turn it over, I didn't look at what it was. It landed face down. I went to the checkout of the library. I checked that book out. And as I walked out the library in my hands, I still had it upside down. I flipped the book over to look at what it was. And it was this book, Seth Speaks, The Eternal Validity of the Soul by Jane Roberts. Some of you guys will have read this. It is an amazing book. All of the Seth material is fantastic. And it, it talks about so many different subjects. But one of the things that was in this book that I've never even considered before, and it's a recurring theme, it kept saying that we create our reality. We are the manifestors of things that appear external to ourselves. And we have control over that. And that idea really fascinated me that somehow I could choose my destiny. I could focus on things and then make that happen in my life. So I started to research this. The books that I've got listed here are books that I read uh, maybe 10, 15 years ago. Most of these are from the turn of the last century. Think and Grow Rich, The Master Key System, Secrets of the Ages, Thoughts Are Things, and As a Man Thinketh. 
they all have the same recurring themes that we create our own reality. And I kept seeing this everywhere I was looking. It was like I was being bombarded with this idea of us being somehow able to manipulate what seems external to ourselves. So I decided to do a little bit of an experiment. I was a hypnotherapist and I was an NLP practitioner. And I had clients come to me and asking me to change their lives. But they were telling me things that they didn't want. So they'd come to me and they'd say, I want to quit smoking. I want to lose weight. And the way I did therapy back then was to get them to focus rather on what they don't want, which is over here, and shift their focus towards what they do. So if I had a client who wanted to quit smoking, they don't want to quit smoking, they want to be healthy, that's what they want. And you can see the difference between those two things. So if I had somebody who wanted to lose weight, they focus on the losing of weight. They didn't want that, they wanted to be slim and healthy. So I taught my clients to shift their focus towards what they wanted instead of what they didn't. And then I started to use techniques using NLP and making things bigger and brighter and more colourful so that it felt like they were having that experience. When they connected to the experience of what they wanted to achieve and they felt the emotions of that experience and then they brought that back into the present, that's when change happened. And I saw in my clients that I was having a tremendous success rate just by getting people to project into a reality that they wanted and make it feel really real. Now all the stuff I've learned from these books seem to be saying that that's the same way that the law of attraction works. But as a hypnotherapist, I'd only done this on stuff like weight loss and smoking and confidence and all that kind of stuff, which is all inside here, so that makes sense. So I thought, I'm gonna do an experiment where I use these techniques to try and manipulate something that seems completely external to ourselves, that we have no control over. So I decided to do a manifestation of something that is very, very physical. So it's not an emotion, it's not a feeling, and it's not something that's intangible or couldn't be measured. I wanted to attract a physical thing into my life by using those same techniques so that I could prove to people that this is the way that we do create our reality. So I started to make a list. And I'm a, I kind of like gadgets. So back then, this is when the Nintendo Wii had just hit the market, that had just come out, and the iPod Touch, had just that was just on the market as well. So I was writing my list of things that I was gonna manifest. And right up there was the Nintendo Wii, and then the iPod Touch, and I was kind of excited about this list that I was creating, and I just wanted to see if it worked. Natalie was doing the same thing, who sat here in the blue. Her list was, I'm gonna manifest a car. So I was like, think big, I'm thinking just little tiny things. She's thinking, you know, let's go for the big stuff, let's manifest a car. So we started to do this experiment. We imagined what it would be like to win a car. And we focused on that reality in exactly the same way as I'd been helping my clients focus on becoming non-smokers or losing weight. So we projected ourselves into that future. And we, we imagined doing things that would only happen after the fact, so after we'd won the car. So one of the things we imagined, we imagined that we'd driven the car to my parents and we'd shown it off to them. One of the things that Natalie did that I thought was really awesome, when she was driving around in her own car, she used to flash her headlights at people that were driving the car that she wanted, the same make of car. So she kind of felt like part of that club. One of the things you must do with the law of attraction is to decide very specifically what you do want. So when she picked a car, she did a lot of research. She chose the make, the model, the spec, the color, the alloy wheels, and she chose an Alfa Romeo Mito. And she was very specific about this. She looked in the car, that's what she wanted. And then we went through all these processes of manifesting that. Within a couple of weeks, I stumbled into a competition on the internet to win an Alfa Romeo Mito. It wasn't exactly the same car, it was a different color, it was a lower spec. But that was enough for us to start going in that direction. Now one of the things that you're gonna notice when you do start manifesting things, and you're very deliberate about this, you have a precise idea of your destination, your goal. But along the way, things will show up that are gonna be similar to that. And if you follow that, it's almost like this item that is presenting itself to you, which is a bit like what you want, but not exactly the same, that's like the end of a rope. And if you pick that up and you start to pull it and go in that direction, it's gonna take you to the actual thing that you want. And when you see these little things, it kind of gives you faith that you know you're doing the right stuff. So we bumped into this competition to win a car, and we're thinking we're on the right path. Let's enter this competition. Now the competition was a racing game on the internet. 
and we had to compete in various stages of this rally. So I obviously did the racing. Natalie did nothing at all. So her manifestation was to make me play a game and I'm doing this game on the internet and if I win, if I come top overall, we're gonna get this car. And we started off the race and my times were terrible. I was not competing with anybody. I was right down on the leaderboards and then we realized that in order to compete, you had to get a nitrous code that you could type into the game and your car would get a boost. But to get the nitrous code, we had to go to an Alfa Romeo garage and take a test drive in the car. Now, if any of you said to me today, how do I manifest a car? The first thing I'm gonna tell you to do is get on a test drive. Get in the car that you wanna drive, savor the experience, feel what it's like, connect to the emotions of it, and then bring that back to the now so you can think about that as you're manifesting the experience of actually owning that car. Now, we didn't take that action, but when we bumped into this competition on the internet, it forced us to take the action. So we go on the test drive. The interesting thing about the test drive, we actually took a test drive in a car that was exactly the same as the one that she'd been focused on. It was the same color, it was the same make and model, it was the same spec, it even had the same wheels. So we're in our manifestation. Kind of felt pretty awesome. But of course, it wasn't ours, we were just taking a test drive. So we turned up at the Alpha Garage, and we said, we hear about the competition to win a car, we need to take a test drive. We go out on the road, the guy in the back seat is continually trying to sell the car to us and we're just focused on imagining that this car is ours because we know that's what we need to do. We need to tune into the emotion of it already being our thing. We get back to the garage and we say to the guy, we need this nitrous code for this game. That's the reason we've come for the, the actual experience of driving the car. And he hadn't got a clue what we were talking about. Now this is really weird, it's their competition, it doesn't know about the code. So he starts to ask some of the other people in the garage and they haven't got a clue about the code either. They phone up the head office, the head office, fortunately they've heard of their own competition, they give the guy the code, the guy gives the code to us, we go home, we carry on racing on the game. Now this is over a few weeks. By this time, I realised we were having a bit of a struggle getting top times. But on the game, there are pickups boosts and things like that that make you go a little bit faster. So I started to meditate and I used these same techniques to imagine that these little boosts that gave you the edge would appear on the racing line. And when I started to play the game after that, that's exactly what happened. So my time started getting higher on the leaderboards and I started winning. Now we'd already won a couple of stages in this competition and to do that there was intermediary prizes. And one of the prizes that we'd won for being the top stage was Nintendo Wii. So that was one of the items that was on my list. So I ticked that box and we carried on going for the car. We got to the last but one day, day before the end of the competition. I logged onto my computer, went to go to the website to complete with the racing and I couldn't access the internet. I'm quite tech savvy, so if a computer breaks, I normally know how to get it working. But no matter what I did, I couldn't get reconnected to the internet. I phoned up Sky and told them about the problem. And they said, well, according to our end, it looks like you're online. So you should be able to access the internet. There's nothing you can do. I couldn't get online. I drove to my parents' house. I tried to use their computer, but their computer had a really slow connection and it just couldn't handle the game, so I couldn't compete. I go back home. I actually reinstalled Windows XP, so it's going back a little while, on the computer to try and make it work. I still couldn't get on the internet, so I went to bed. The next morning I got up, hadn't changed a single thing, turned on the computer, went to race on this game, and all of a sudden I get back in there, but it's only a couple of hours before the end of the race. I did everything that I could, I continued the racing, but I only managed to get my time up to third place, and then the competition ended. Now I want you to guess what the prize was for third place. It was the iPod Touch. So I'm ticking the other box on my list. I've managed to manifest the iPod Touch and the Nintendo Wii, and that was my list. So I've manifested my things. Natalie didn't get her car, but that's her list, and I was doing all the work. So we've manifested two things off our list, but we thought we'd done everything right to get the car. It felt like we should have manifested this, but we didn't. We came in third place, and we were so sure we'd done everything right, we kind of thought that the people in first and second might have been cheating, and their times could have been taken off, and we get a phone call telling us we'd manifested it. And there were several things that we did focus on while we were trying to do this experiment. One of those things was getting an unexpected phone call telling us we'd won the car. 
Now, if we'd won the race, it would have been obvious. We'd have known we'd have won the race and we'd been expecting the call. We imagine going to the uh, Alfa Romeo garage and picking up the car keys while the newspaper was taking photographs and things like that. So we'd done everything that we should have done in order to have got this experience. So it didn't make sense. What? All the stuff I'd learned about the law of attraction suddenly seemed to be failing me. Then a couple of weeks passed and we got a phone call. Natalie answered the phone. She looked really excited. She gets off the phone. I'm like, what's going on? She says, that was the Alfa garage. We've just won a car. I said, what do you mean we've won a car? I knew we'd come in third place. As it turns out, when we went to take the test drive and we said to the guy behind the counter, we hear about the competition to win the car. We need to fill out the forms, we need to take the test drive. What we didn't know is there were two competitions. There was the one that I was doing on the internet that required a huge amount of effort, but there was also a raffle. And all we had to do is put our name and address on a piece of paper that got entered into the raffle. And that's what Nat did. And we got picked out as the winners of the top prize. And the top prize was this car. This is the actual car that we won. This is Nat sitting in the car with our dog Colin. This is the car that she took home, but this is the one they took a photograph off in the newspaper because they said the yellow colored show better. But that car, you can't really see it there, but it's a black car that's got a very specific yellow fleck in the paint, which is what she'd chosen. It's the same make, the same model, the same spec, the same color, and the alloy wheels of what we've been focused on. So she manifested that. We thought that's awesome. But there is a side of the law of attraction that not many people know about, and I call it the dark side of the law of attraction. Not only did we manifest this car, but we also manifested having to give this car back. We got to keep it for six months and then we had to give it back. Now, I believe that everything that happens in our lives we do create, and I take responsibility for the good stuff and the bad stuff, you have to do that. You can't just say I've manifested all this great stuff, but all this that's going wrong in my life isn't my fault, that's the fault of somebody else. You need to take responsibility for the whole lot. So we did manifest winning this car, but only for six months, so we had to give it back. So I recorded almost what I've just said to you guys, and I put it on YouTube, and I explained in a little bit more detail about how we did this. And a lot of people watched the video, and they copied what we'd done, and they manifested cars as well. Mom! And they contacted me and said, I've won a car doing what you said, but I crashed it on the way home. Or I've won a car doing what you said, but it's now been stolen. So we had people manifesting something, and then, also manifesting the negative, the polar opposite. I'm gonna be talking about that in a little while. But the second experiment that we did, after a few months had passed, we started to doubt ourselves. Now I know this was really specific, but we started to say, did we really make it happen? No, it was a competition, anybody could have won this. So we decided to do the experiment again and manifest something else. Again, we wanted something physical and tangible so that we could say that we'd made it happen. We wanted to go on holiday, so we decided to manifest a snowboarding holiday. We said the conditions that we wanted, we wanted it to be glorious sunshine so we could sip on top of mountains, drinking more wine. We wanted amazing powdered snow. We wanted all our lift passes paid for. We wanted to fly out there with everything being paid for. We wanted luxury accommodation. But we stipulated one thing. This time we said when our manifestation shows up, we want some proof that we did it. So we asked for a very specific sign. This was the sign, we chose the Flower of Life. At the time we were doing the Flower of Life workshop, so we were doing a lot of time studying this image. It's a really important image to us, and we decided that we wanted this to be our sign to tell us that if we do manifest this holiday, we definitely made that happen. So that's what we chose as the sign. Within a week of doing the same process, meditating, imagining we were on the holiday, enjoying the holiday, imagining that we're back at home telling people about it, always events that are after the fact. So we've projected ourselves into the future where we've already won what we're focused on. And then we started to have those emotional experiences and bring them back to the present. And we use that as the fuel to get where we want to go. Well, a couple of weeks passed and I did stumble into a competition that was to win a holiday that looked exactly like uh, we were interested in. I entered it, a couple of days later the competition ended. I was picked as the winner. And this awesome snowboarder here, look at that, that's me. <laughs> this is us on top of uh, a mountain, and you can see it was a glorious weather, and we were doing exactly what we wanted to do. And this is the hotel that we stayed at. That's the Berghof Hotel in Austria. It was a fantastic hotel, we had an amazing time. But that hotel, we didn't know this, we didn't choose this location. We just said the, the qualities that we wanted in the experience, and then this is where we ended up winning somewhere. And what we didn't know about that hotel, it is completely unique. It's got a feature that I don't think you'll see in any other hotel, probably in the entire world. 
On the very first day that we arrived there, we saw that feature. It was in the entrance to the restaurant of the hotel. And this is a photograph of Natalie going into that restaurant. You see, on the floor there, we've got an amazing example of the Flower of Life, the exact sign that we asked for. So that was, that to me was such an awesome sign. Now I could stand here all day telling you things I've manifested in my life. These two things are very physical. I know some people don't like to manifest things that are physical. They kind of think that it's greedy. To me, there are a lot of people that won't even entertain the idea of looking at this unless I can show them ways that they can have some kind of material gain from it. But once people see that that's possible, then we start looking at deeper things. Now earlier when I said, what do you want to manifest? And you said happiness, that's an awesome example because people manifest stuff like this because the emotions that you think it's going to give you. We manifested a car because we thought a car would make us feel a certain way. So why not just skip that and go straight to the emotion? So we can manifest emotions. And this is the way that I've been using the law of attraction uh, for possibly around about 10 years or so, maybe 10, 15 years, um, a long time before, before The Secret came about. And I'm in awe of what The Secret has done because it's got this information out to the public and now people are starting to take it seriously. Now, years ago, when we had a very small mind, body, spirit section in, in our bookshops, successful people were embarrassed to tell you that they did this stuff. I've recently come back from an event in Brighton over the past couple of weeks, and most of the speakers at that event are multi, multi-millionaire speakers, and every single one of them had something to say about the law of attraction and how that is the way that they've become successful in their lives. Of course, what they have chosen to focus on might be different to what we choose to focus on, but there's no limit to what you can manifest. If you want to manifest a sighting tonight, when Audrey does a CE5 event, then that's what we can focus on. If you want to manifest more happiness in our lives, more confidence, you know, maybe a partner, maybe while you're at this event meeting your future husband or wife, then that is what you can focus on. I'll say very quickly, when you are manifesting people, if you manifest a car, you have a car which is considered kind of inanimate and you have to draw that to you. If you're manifesting a person, whether it's a business partner or a romantic relationship or whatever that might be, in order for you to be perfect for them, they're also perfect for you. So you're both manifesting each other. So you kind of meet in the middle and it's much easier. But what I want to do now is show you guys, you're already doing this. You can't not do this. This is happening all the time. But there's a particular way that we all do this. And when, when you realize it, it's so awesome because you realize the potential and the power that you've got and the amount of control you've got. Now, I don't know if you can see this very clearly, but this is what I call a junk drawer. This is just where you stuff things that you think I might need one day. I've got probably three of these in my kitchen. The entire of my garage is one of these. And I think what we do with this, every once in a while, we kind of think we're gonna tidy these things up. So we'll, we'll take something out of the junk drawer and we'll kind of hover over the kitchen bin and we'll think, do I need this? Is this any use to me? Has anybody had this experience? You kind of shove stuff away and then you're asking yourself if you need it and you can't think of any use for it. So you throw it in the bin. You take the bin out to the wheelie bin, the guys come and collect it and take it away, and what happens next? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> something happens in your life where the thing you've just thrown away and nothing else on the planet is so essential to what you need. It's just crazy. This has happened to me countless times, and it used to really frustrate me. And I used to say to myself, why does this happen? Why is this going on? I've had this thing for seven, eight years. I've never needed it. All of a sudden I've thrown it away. Within a couple of days, it's so important to me and nothing else will do. And this is something that other people experience as well. We see this, we have this experience. What's going on here is we're asking ourselves whether or not we need something. Can it be any use to us? And we can't think of a use for it, so we chuck it away. But that question doesn't end there in our conscious minds. That question filled us down into our subconscious mind. Now our subconscious minds are connected to the superconsciousness, all that is, God, source energy, whatever you want to call it. Not only is it connected to these things, but it's also got some kind of ability to manipulate them in some way and communicate with them in some way so events can change on our path. So when we ask a question, do I need this thing? And we throw it away and that question goes down into our subconscious our reality then starts to change so that we do need that thing and that thing is perfect. And that's pretty awesome when you think about it because you have conscious control over the question. 
as soon as you ask the question, you then start to put the process in place so that what we call the law of attraction starts to change our reality so that we can make things happen. So all we really need to do is just kind of ask better questions. So if you get up in the morning and every single day you kind of ask yourself, why am I so happy? Why is my life so awesome? Why do great things always happen to me? It doesn't matter if you can't answer those questions, that's gonna filter down into your subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind is then gonna do whatever it does to manipulate our reality that appears external to us so that those questions are answered. So if we're saying, why am I so happy? All of a sudden events start presenting themselves in our lives that give us reason to be happy. So whatever it is that you desire, if there's something that feels wrong in your life, you wanna shift it to something that feels right, and start asking why am I attracting an abundance of this quality that I want? Rather than saying, why am I so depressed? Why am I in debt? Why am I struggling? Because if they're the questions you're asking, then that, that's the blueprint that you're sending to your subconscious mind and it's gonna answer those questions and it will keep on giving you examples. I've got a question that I've just jotted down here. If you wake up in the morning, you say this question every single day, how can I raise £100,000 by Christmas this year and have an awesome time doing it and then enrich loads of people's lives while I'm spending that money and just make some people feel truly amazing? I have no idea how I can answer that question, but if I keep on asking it, something will answer it, something will present itself. And that's what I've seen with my journey on the law of attraction and with people that I speak to with this as well. It just seems to be the case that every time that we can, we can come up with, with a good question, and we can, we can say that question without then getting distracted by its opposite, because that's kind of what happens far too often, then our subconscious minds can make that a reality. But we want to make this process a little more conscious. I did mention, when I was a hypnotherapist, people used to come to me and they'd say, I want to stop doing this, rather than saying, I want to start doing that. So people are saying, I want to lose weight, I want to stop being fat, whereas really they're saying, I want to be healthy, I want to be slim. I want to stop smoking, again, I want to be healthy. I don't want to be poor, I want to be wealthy. So the first rule of the law of attraction is to shift your focus so you're facing the direction you want to go. But I want you to think of the thing that you might want in your life. So let's choose happiness. And I want you to imagine that that's over here. This is happiness and we need to move towards this to get more of it. But the polar opposite of that, depression, that's over in this direction. And we're somewhere along the middle of this. So our rule number one tells us that rather than facing the depression that we don't want, we have to turn around and look towards what we want. So now we've got at least focused in the right direction so we know our goal and we can start taking action to move towards our goal. If we want to lose weight, over here is weight loss, a beach body, being healthy, whatever it is that you perceive as being your ideal size, that's in this direction and what you're trying to move away from is over here. When you face this direction, that's when you make the decision as to what it is that you want in your life. When you take action to move in this direction, these are things like joining the gym or going on a diet and eating healthy. If you imagine these as locations and between the two, there is a river. On top of the surface of that river, imagine you are sitting in a boat and you're pointing your boat where you wanna go. Every action that you take is like you are paddling towards your goal but it requires effort. What most people are doing, they're kind of fighting against the flow. So they're like this guy in a canoe trying to paddle upstream. Upstream is the direction that you're trying to get to to manifest what it is that you want in your life. And you do things that require effort, but every time you do them, you get a little bit closer. But the trouble is when you relax or you get distracted or you get bored or peer pressure or your friends tell you that you're wasting your time, that's like taking your oars out of the water and if he took his oars out of the water now, you're just gonna end up back where you were. Now the problem is, we tend to be a way motivated people. And if we wanna lose weight, and we take a bit of effort, and we start making progress, and then we slip back to where we were, we normally go one step further backwards. We look at ourselves and we say, this is the fattest I've ever been, I best take some action. And we go back to the gym, we start eating healthy again, and we move back in this direction. And we go over that cycle over and over again. We do it in relationships, we do it in uh, money. We do it in all areas of our life. We have what we want and what we don't want. We take physical actions and we move in this direction. We relax and we float back downstream. 
We see this with diets more than anything else because yo-yo diets, we can see it in people. We can't really look at a person and know where they are financially on this scale, but we can really see it with someone's weight. So this is what most people are doing. And what I suggest that we do instead is take that river and turn it so it's flowing in the direction we want to go. So rather than fighting, you're actually going with the flow. It's effortless. But we can't just do that and then manifest what we want. We still need to put the boat in the water and we still got to get in and we still got to point it in the direction we want to go and we are going to have to row, but it's effortless because now we're flowing with the current. We're not fighting anymore. And if we have a little rest, we will carry on going in this direction. And this is why when your subconscious mind is in alignment with what you want at a conscious level, things are effortless. The direction that the river is flowing is your subconscious beliefs. And these are at a subconscious level, so we don't necessarily know what they are, but that dictates where we end up. If we subconsciously believe that we should be poor because we've got the idea that being spiritual is somehow a good thing if you're in poverty, then we'll be down here because we want to be good people. If we've got a belief that having money is somehow evil, then we're going to shun that and we're going to move away from it. So if we consciously wanted more money, we'd be fighting. And our subconscious mind's always going to win, so we'll end up down here. If your subconscious mind thinks that for whatever reason you should be fat, you always will be. And no matter how many diets you do, exercise programs, it will always feel like a struggle. You'll make a little bit of effort, and then the moment you relax, you're going to be back where you started. So the trick to the law of attraction is to get your conscious and subconscious mind aligned so that you can focus on what you want at a conscious level and you can have beliefs at a subconscious level in your heart that are going to go out there and affect your reality that are also moving in this direction. So how do we do that? When I was thinking about the law of attraction, I was thinking about talking to you guys today, I wanted to kind of get an image in your mind that you could take away and it's going to encapsulate everything that you need to do in order to manifest what it is that you want. And the thing that I could think of more than anything else is this guy, Cupid. I want you to remember this picture because this encapsulates everything that you need to do to manifest anything that you want in your life. Something that I've alluded to is the dark side of the law of attraction. I'm going to be talking about that a little bit more in just a moment, but Cupid is all about love. And if we want to avoid the dark side of the law of attraction, we have to be coming from a place of love. We have to be manifesting from our hearts. So love is the most important thing. So I've got that down as step one, to be in a place of love. The second step of the process, and this is Cupid aiming his arrow. We need to decide what we want. It doesn't matter what you want, but the more specific you are about it, the more chance you have of getting it. The way I like to think about this, if you imagine that you are a designer or an architect and you're going to create a blueprint for a building that you want to create, anything that you leave out of that is probably going to be messed up by the builders. So you have to get every little detail and make sure it's precisely how you want it, then you pass it on to the builders and they create the building. It's exactly the same with the law of attraction. Whatever you want to manifest in your life, focus on the precise details, write them down. Be, be very, very specific, and then that's what you'll manifest. Now, obviously, some details are not important to you. If you want to manifest a romantic partner, you might want their religious beliefs to be in alignment with yours. Maybe you want them to like the same music as you. But there's going to be some things, like hair colour, you're not going to be that bothered about. So some things we can just leave. Other things we need to be precise and specific about, because we do get precisely what we focus on. So we need to aim. The next thing we need to do is to put some energy into this. And this is pulling back. If you imagine that I wanted to manifest something, so I'm aiming my bow and arrow at what I want to manifest, and it's over in this direction. If I am to pull back an arrow and let it go with no power, it's just going to fall to the floor in front of me, and I'm never going to hit my bullseye. And hitting the bullseye is the manifestation. When the arrow hits the bullseye, that's when we get what we're focused on. So I need to pull back with enough force and enough energy, so when I let it go, straight line into the bullseye. The emotion that you need to do this and what puts the energy into it is the feelings that you will experience once you have achieved what it is that you want. So the emotion of being there, that's the process of getting there. So whatever it is that you want, you think to yourself, once I've got this thing and it is already in my life, I'm already enjoying it, how will I feel? How is it going to make me feel? And you project yourself into that 
and you imagine like you are already experiencing it. So you see through those eyes, you kind of connect with the smells and the tastes and the feelings that you're going to experience. So you live it and you really crank that up. You make it bigger and brighter and more colorful and you bring it closer. And it's that emotion, whatever you feel at that point, that you bring back to your present. And that is what's going to get you there. That's the fuel that moves you in the direction. So when we're talking about the power to get there, this is pulling back the bow. But there's another step in the process. You've got to let go. If I'm going to shoot an arrow into a target, I can aim perfectly, I can pull back. But if I just stay here forever, I'm just going to be exhausted and I will never hit my target. The moment of letting go, we've already seen. It's the moment where you're asking a question, standing over the kitchen bin, trying to sort out the junk drawer, and you think, I can't think of anything, and you just throw it away. At that moment, you've let go. And at that moment, you're handing over your blueprint to these builders. You're giving this conscious idea to your subconscious mind, which will then start to make it happen. But in the law of attraction, there's some conflicting beliefs about the letting go process. So I'm gonna tell you what I think, and why what I think a lot of other people think is a little bit wrong. There is this idea that you kind of focus on what you want, you put your suggestion out there, whether you write it down and throw it over your shoulder, whatever process you do, and then you need to forget all about it. Because once you've kind of ordered that thing, it's on its way to you. But if you think about it, it gets reset. And every time you think about it, it starts again. Now this is, an idea that a lot of people believe and I don't believe that because we're constantly manifesting things and if people are struggling with debt they're, they're struggling with debt because they're manifesting that in their lives but you don't think I don't want to be in debt and then you start it coming to you and then the next time you think I hate all these red bills coming through my door it doesn't reset because you've thought about it again it keeps on coming to you and the reason it does that is because we're still aimed and we've still got a motion and pull back and we're still putting energy into this so the way I like to think about this letting go process, if you imagine that you've got your arrow and you shoot it into your target, while the arrow is flying through the air, this is the time lag in manifestation. When it hits the target, that's the moment the thing appears in your life. Like we get the phone call that says you've won the car. That's the moment of the physical actualization of your manifestation, but it takes time. If, while the arrow is flowing through the air, you start to think to yourself, this doesn't work, this is a load of nonsense, this isn't gonna manifest what I want. It's almost like a crosswind has pushed that arrow off its course. It's still manifesting something and it's still gonna hit a target, but this new target is gonna represent something else in your life. The first target could have been abundance, but when the wind blows it off course, it could be going into a target that represents poverty. It could be happiness or it could be depression. If you're suffering from depression, you want to manifest happiness, that's what you're aiming towards. But if as soon as you start to manifest happiness, you're thinking to yourself, this is just a load of nonsense, it's not working for me, then it's the crosswind has pushed it towards depression. That's why you need faith to carry on being focused on what it is that you want. What I prefer to do, if you've done all the work, you've done the manifestation, you've kind of let go and you've given it over to the universe and you're waiting for the delivery, every time you think about that, and you get excited about it, and you feel good about it, it's like the arrow is going even faster, and it's gonna hit even sooner, and your thing's gonna turn up in your life even quicker. So one of the things that I used to do is a, a little bit of a meditation for myself when I had trouble having faith in things. I used to remember when I was a little child, and it was coming up to Christmas, and there was always something that I had to go out and <coughs> I'd be with my parents when they bought it for me, maybe something I needed to be measured for. So I knew they'd bought that gift. And we'd come back home and they'd wrap it up and they'd put it under the Christmas tree. And I knew it was there. And all those days leading up to Christmas, I knew it was wrapped up, waiting for me. I had to wait to Christmas day before I could have it. But at no point did I ever wonder whether they'd bought it or not, because I could see it. So I like to think about manifestation like this. If you follow the process and you feel good, when you start to manifest the thing, just have faith that it's definitely on its way. And you've just got to wait till Christmas morning and you can open it and then it's yours. That's kind of what we're doing with this. I did mention the dark side of the law of attraction. This is the difference between polarity consciousness and unity consciousness. The way that a lot of people are manifesting their reality is based on quite a lot of stuff that I've just said to you. The idea of presenting your mind into a point in the future 
and then using your mind in ways to manipulate that to make it feel a certain way and bringing it back to now. And this is manifestation from the mind. When we do this, we are manifesting from a place of polarity consciousness in the third dimension. So we are manifesting what we're focused on, but we have left, right, up, down, hot, cold, the yin and the yang. So when we're focused in this direction on what we're trying to manifest, we are by default also manifesting its polar opposite. So we manifested a car and we also manifested giving the car away. The snowboarding holiday that we manifested, we did this a little bit differently. So we only manifested the holiday, but it wasn't the first holiday we manifested. We manifested a holiday before that one. It was also snowboarding. It seemed like everything was going awesome. We got exactly what we were looking for. But then on the first day, I put my snowboard down on a hill and it just lost it. It cost me a couple of thousand pounds to replace all my equipment because the snowboard connected to my bindings in a specific way, so I had to replace everything. The holiday was actually cheaper than the amount of money I had to spend to replace my equipment. And also on the first day, uh, Natalie fell over and banged her knees and ended up in the trauma clinic and she couldn't snowboard the entire holiday. So we used polarity consciousness to manifest what we wanted, but we didn't realize that's what we were doing. So we almost, we manifested its polar opposite as well, which was the finances for the holiday and also the injury. And I've seen this pattern in so many people that use the law of attraction, but we all like to kind of say, this works because I've got this. And we ignore that. We kind of shove it aside because we want it to work. We want to share it with people. And we, we like to focus on the things that are going well. And then we ignore or don't take responsibility for the stuff that's not going quite so well. In order to move between these two and just get the thing that you want, you need to be manifesting from unity consciousness. And to do this, you need to be kept connected to your heart. I'm going to in a moment take you through a little bit of a guided meditation where you can do this but I'm going to talk you through it first of all I want you to imagine that you want to go somewhere in your car you go and get in your car on the drive you start the engine you have to press certain pedals you have to turn the steering wheel and you can drive somewhere but if there's no petrol in the car it doesn't matter how well you do that you can do all of those actions, but you'll still be sat on your drive. Equally, if you want to drive somewhere and you fill your car up with fuel, but you don't get in the thing and you don't turn the ignition on, you don't turn the steering wheel or press the pedals, you're going to go nowhere. The car will just sit on the drive filled with fuel. We need the fuel and we need the physical element as well. It's exactly the same with the law of attraction. The fuel that will take us to this place is emotion. And in this particular case, we're talking about the emotion of unconditional love, joy and gratitude. Very high vibrational frequencies. But we also need the mechanics. We need to know what we want. We need to focus on it. We need to have an image in our mind, either a thought or a feeling, or an image if we're visual, of our destination. We need our goal. And we also need to do some mechanics of a meditation as well. And that's like pressing those pedals and turning that wheel. We need those two things. Otherwise, we're going to get a manifestation from a lower level of consciousness. We'll get what we want and we'll get the polar opposite as well. And that's not what we're looking for. So in order to do this, there's a little meditation that's extracted from the macabre meditation that you learn on the Flower of Life workshop. That meditation is awesome. I highly recommend that you do the Flower of Life workshop if you hadn't and learn to do this. But it's something that you, are, you learn this over several days. But I've extracted a small part of this that I often use while I'm doing manifestation. And it just enables you to shift your breathing to a higher dimensional reality so you can connect to love more easily and then you can use that energy to focus on what you want to manifest in your life. So there is a tube that runs through your body. With the right kind of eyesight you can see it, with the right kind of scientific equipment you can measure it. It really does run through our body. And it starts one hand's length above our heads. It starts here. And it goes one hand length beneath your feet if you're standing up. On all people, it's that big. So if you make that symbol with your own hands, that's, our, that's the circumference of this tube that runs through your body. When we breathe, all that we do is breathe in a third dimensional reality. We breathe in air through our nose or through our mouth, and obviously the, the oxygen gets around through our bloodstream, through our lungs, and then we breathe out. And we, it's a very physical process. There is a way that we are supposed to breathe that we don't do anymore. And this is by using this 
tube that goes through your body. When you breathe in a different way, it lifts your energy. So if you imagine that tube going through your body and whether you're breathing in or breathing out, you just imagine energy coming into that tube from above and from below and then meeting in your belly. And this can take you to a, a higher frequency. If you do that, the size of that specific circle on you is the size of an orb that just sits around in your belly. And this is where this energy meets when you breathe in. It's coming from above and it's coming from below. You can lift up this energy into your heart just by using your focus and your attention and then breathing in, just lifting that orb up until it sits at your heart centre. We're going to do that in just a moment. But the first thing you've got to do is connect to this idea of love. Unconditional love and joy and peace and that kind of thing. And I think for a lot of people this is quite difficult to do and I used to really, really struggle with this. When I struggled with this and I was doing manifestation, I was getting the things showing up in my life that I didn't want and also the good stuff as well. But as soon as I started doing this through the Flower of Life workshop and I started focusing from a place of love, this is when my manifestation started to be just what I wanted and not the polar opposite because I'm creating from a higher place. It's creation from the heart. So I want you to find yourself a nice, comfortable, relaxing place. If you need to move, then do so because we're going to do a little bit of meditation together. And I'm going to guide you through it. But before we start, there is some groundwork. And this is to connect with love in whatever way is most appropriate for you. Now, I know some of you guys have got kids. If you've got a, if you've got a child and you can remember when you first had that baby and it was handed to you in the hospital and you gazed into that child's eyes and your entire world just ceased to exist and that was the most important thing to you. You unconditionally love this new baby that you've just created. And when you looked into their eyes, it's like you're looking into the eyes of God and they're looking back at you and you are everything that exists to them. If you've had that kind of experience and you can feel that in your heart, then I want you to bring that experience back and I want you to connect to that experience. If you've got kids and they're little shits and you curse the day that they were born, don't do that. We have an alternative and it's the one I'm gonna use. So I haven't got kids, but I really like cats, right? And when I do this meditation, I imagine that I've got a little tiny kitten, kind of hold it up here in my face. And it, those people who are gonna do this, just go through this now in your mind as I'm talking about it. But it's a very small kitten, its ears are still folded over, it's got a little tiny tail. It can't quite even meow yet, it just sort of squeaks at me. It's got little pink feet because it's not been outside and it's nice and soft and its fur smells nice. And when I imagine that up by my face and I can feel the warmth of the kitten, when I project unconditional love into that kitten, it starts to purr and I can feel the vibration of the purr and I can feel that it appreciates that love and it can connect with it. That's what connects me to unconditional love. Some people like to use the idea of a puppy. And if you're using the idea of a puppy and doing the same thing, then just imagine its tail wagging. The vibration of a puppy dog's tail wagging is immense. There's such a tremendous amount of joy in that. Now, the kitten's purr is still a very high energy, but it's a slightly different energy. But both of these things are so awesome for connecting to your heart. So I imagine a kitten, maybe a puppy, or if you've got kids that are, that are nice, then you can use a little baby or whatever works for you. Another alternative is just to imagine that you have just given birth and your baby is being handed to you. And it doesn't matter whether you're a guy or a girl, you can imagine these things. We can imagine whatever we like. So imagine you've just been handed your baby and you are gazing into their eyes. This creation that you've made, this life. And just connect to that until you can feel that sense of unconditional love. And as you can feel that, allow your eyes to close. And just let your hands rest in your lap and become aware of that tube that is through your body. And as you breathe, just imagine the energy coming in through the tube from above and from below. And it just meets inside your belly, connecting you to Mother Earth and Father Sky. And just bathe in that energy for a bit. Just breathe in that sense of joy, that sense of a smile. And imagine what it would be like if every cell, molecule, and electron in your body was just softly smiling happily, just bathing in this shower of joy and unconditional love. Just enjoy that feeling. 
And as you feel that energy and that little ball inside your belly, just place one hand on top of the other with your thumbs touching and your palms face up. And as you're on your in-breath, just pull up that all until it reaches your heart center. And then allow your hands to rest in your lap. Keep the orb in your heart. And as you breathe in, just allow the energy to fill the orb. And then just imagine it expanding out around you. Just keeping yourself in this place of love. There's a lot of very, very special people here today. And as you imagine this energy flowing out from your heart, it can begin to touch the other people around you. And you can begin to feel their energy connecting with yours. And collectively, the group energy just feels peaceful and joyful. It feels so lovely. You know, one of the things that I like to do when I meditate, I'm a little bit mischievous, I'm a little bit childish, and I like to put in the idea of giggling. So can you remember when you was at school and you've got the giggles, but the teacher's trying to be dead serious and you know you're not allowed to laugh? You know that experience? But it doesn't matter what someone says or how serious they are. You've just got this inane grin on your face and you're trying to hide it. You know what that feels like? You can just imagine those kind of feelings flowing through your body. That sense of happiness, that sense of joy. Just completely letting go. And just let it flow out from you to the other people around you. And just share that and enjoy it. Welcome other people's love. Other people's joy and peace into your heart. And as you breathe like this, you are connected to a higher dimensional reality. You're breathing from unity consciousness, and this is the way that we should breathe. And if you could see it, if you had the, the ability to see auric vision, you could see chakras, you can see people's auric fields, you could see that energy now flowing in through this tube. And you can feel it. And as you stay in this place, it's like we've put fuel in that car, but we're still sitting on the driveway and we want to go somewhere. We want to do something with this energy. So to do that, we bring back whatever it is that we wanted to focus on manifesting. And it could be happiness. It could be an encounter later tonight, or it could be whatever it is that you want in your life. Maybe it's your future husband or wife. It can be anything at all. And as you focus on that thing and you stay in this place of love, just invite that thing in. And imagine what your life is going to be like when you've got more of this. It's already happened. But don't see it. Be it. Feel it. Saturate yourself with it. Just breathe it into your body. And then imagine an event that is going to take place because you have manifested whatever it is that you've created in your lives. An event that can only take place because you have done this and you've been successful and now it's part of you. If it's a material thing that you're attracting to yourself, maybe you're showing it off to a friend or a family member. Maybe you're introducing your new wife or your new husband to your family, whatever it might be. Or maybe if it's just happiness, you're just laughing to yourself at home for no reason whatsoever other than it just feels good. Doesn't that feel nice? So connect to those emotions. And just imagine them beginning to get stronger and stronger. Because the more you can connect with this, the happier you feel, the more powerful it becomes, the more relaxed you become, the more joy you can experience. And it just keeps on circling round faster and faster. So if you can see images of whatever it is that you choose to create, make them bigger and brighter, bring them closer. Maybe there's a smell or a taste. What can you feel? What are other people saying around you? Are they congratulating you? Are they impressed by whatever it is that you've done? How do you feel about it? Do you feel proud? I know sometimes when I do a bit of DIY, I'll stand there afterwards with my hands on my hips, looking at what I've done and giving myself a nice, good, slow nod, hoping other people will see what I'm doing and look at my good work. But I feel kind of proud when I do that. And sometimes when you manifest something in your life, you can have that sense of pride. Whatever it is that works for you, whatever emotion it is, that you experience now that this has already come to pass. Just feel that. Enjoy it and share it. Because this, this is the process that gets you where you want to go. The emotion of being there is the fuel that takes you there. 
when you can project yourself into a future reality whilst being in a place of unconditional love and you can bring back whatever it is that you want and just let that be and then connect to those emotions and then bring them back into the present that is what makes it happen so know that just like Cupid you have been grounded in love you have aimed at what you want you've pulled back your bow with your emotion so now let's let go and imagine that arrow flying a straight line into that bullseye and have total faith that that's going to happen because every time you think about this from this moment forward you can get excited about it you can feel happy about it and know that it is in your future now it could happen today you might bump into your future spouse in a few minutes you never know manifestation can happen that quickly it could happen over the coming hours or days months or even years depending on what it is that you have manifested in your life do we know then when we consciously decide on what we've won, we've turned our focus and we've moved towards it and we've been in a place of love and our subconscious mind has taken that idea. It's like we've pre presented a blueprint to the universe and now that thing, that creation, that blueprint that you've made, that's now being made manifest. So your life will start to go along a certain path and at the end of this path is the actualization of your desire. But the path might meander, meander off in different directions. Eventually you're going to reach your goal. So what I'll say to you, over the coming days and weeks, keep your eyes and ears open. Trust your intuition. Because there will be things that are presented to you that may be a little bit different to what you normally do. And if you focus on those and you follow those, they will lead you to this path. And just how we saw the competition to win a car that was slightly different to what we wanted, but we jumped on that and that was like pulling on the rope and at the end of the rope was the exact thing we'd been focused on and it's the same with you guys whatever it is you want to manifest if something appears to turn up in your life which is a little bit like that then follow that direction because that is leading you where you want to go those are the little signs that you need to focus on so in your own time just bring your awareness back into the room and just feel a sense of gratitude. You build up a nice amount of energy so you can send that energy down into the earth if you choose. You can send it out to a loved one or maybe to anywhere in the earth and humanity that might need that. Just bring your awareness back and that sense of joy, that sense of happiness. And have that image in your mind of Cupid, grounded in love. We can't go anywhere without that love emotion aiming at what we want, pulling back and having the emotional experience of where we're going to get to and then letting go so it can happen. And that's all there is to manifestation. And I've spent the last 15 years of my life manifesting things that are truly incredible just by doing this. This is all it takes, a little bit of faith and a little bit of focus and you can really create anything that you desire. There are rules and there are laws. Some of them you can break, some of them you can bend. But if you believe it can happen, then you've now got the tools to make it happen. Thank you. I've got a huge box of my books. <laughs> right, I've brought these books over with me. I bought a box. They cost me £5.40p each to buy the box but I'm selling them at, at £5 each just to cover the expense of buying them so if anybody wants one there's probably 48 left because I could have put a couple on the table but I can sign that for you and you can take one of those away. <laughs> the, after you finish reading this one, read the new one because it's better. <laughs> it's currently sitting at the publishers. The difference between that book and the new one is the emotion of love. If you stay saturated in the emotion of love, that is so important, it's such an important thing. And then do what that book tells you, then you can, you can manifest. And it's exactly the same as we've just talked about here today. But there's some awesome stories in there about the uh, a house that we, we manifested together and some very specific qualities that that house had. And it, I mean, when you read about those kind of things, it really opens your eyes as to what truly is possible if you can focus on it. Because there are, there are things that you just, I get so many people send me emails saying I've manifested, thank you. <laughs> I get so many people send me emails telling me the things that they've created in their lives that are just so specific and bizarre. It still blows my mind and I'm 15 years into this journey and I'm just in awe of how, how we can do that. We've got such a tremendous amount of power. And to me, 
it kind of feels a little bit like anything that you do, you apply this to it as well and you can do it so much better. It's almost like cheating, but it's guilt free. So it's not just about manifesting a big bag of cash or a car or whatever. It's about being your ultimate potential of what you choose to be, growing as a spiritual being and attracting insights to you that take you to that next level. It's about making more happiness in your life or meeting your soulmate. And these are things that can happen much more quickly and much more easily if you deliberately, consciously choose to make them happen and then take the necessary steps to go on that journey. So, anybody want a book or any questions, then fire away. Yeah, Audrey. <laughs> Well, we've got, there's a couple of things going on. You've got the idea of everyone's got free will. I can't just manifest stuff to happen to another person if they don't really want it. I can chat to them about it and get them to focus on what they want. But it's, it's kind of a little bit of a gray area. There are very advanced meditations that you can do and it only takes a handful of people to do them, but if those people are focused on a certain reality, our reality will change and everybody that is experiencing our dimension at the moment will go through that change and we'll have a complete history and a complete future that is created in that moment. So in that sense, on that level, that is possible. But, but for me to say, for example, create something for someone, that, that's kind of a bit different. But it's interesting because when I started getting into this and focusing on creating things, I had a lot of blocks about accepting and I was focused on different creations and I noticed they were showing up in people's lives around me. So one of the things that I did, um, I wanted to manifest a holiday to go to Dubai and I chose the Atlantis Hotel and I changed the background on my computer to a picture of that hotel. And I focused on the emotion of being there, did everything that I felt that I should do. I got so many blocks up, I couldn't accept it into my life. And then my brother, won a holiday to that exact hotel and now his facebook picture of a photograph of him in the hotel swimming pool is almost the same shot from the same angle as the pitch that i used when i was trying to do the manifestation so i mean i think the energy of something when you're focused on it filters down into a physical reality and then it is there and you've got to collect it we can't just sit here and meditate and say i want to manifest whatever and it just suddenly appears we've got to take an action to interact with that now back when I had these blocks, I wasn't taking that step, I wasn't following that guidance or collecting the delivery of, of the manifestation. But my brother was open to, to do that, he wasn't focused on doing it, so I kind of feel that I manifested the thing and then he picked it up. So in that sense, I mean, it's, it's not exactly what, what you're saying, but it's... What that was, do you think it can connect to sending like just the people? Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Well, I'm a, Nat and I are both healers, and healers, we're both healers. Uh, we do a lot of healing work. I mean, I, my journey was stage hypnotist, hypnotherapist, spiritual healer, law of attraction. Since I got into the law of attraction stuff, it does seem like this is an important foundation for everything else that I do. There's no way I would even embark on any uh, physical activity or anything without first doing this kind of stuff because it feels like it's a foundation for me and I mean when I talk about we're going in this direction then we're back where we first started and it's, it's an endless cycle of effort that's how it felt before I aligned my subconscious so if I'm doing healing I will do that first of all um, I'll focus on the outcome there's actually a someone who I was doing healing on a little while ago she contacted me on the very very final stages of cancer we knew she was going to die, it was her time to die, uh, but she'd gone through chemo a couple of times before and it was her, an horrific experience when she'd done that. And she'd got a small boy and she came to me just for some help on those final few weeks. And I did the law of attraction to focus on a potential outcome. And one of the things that we said that she should focus on is when she goes to the doctors for a chemo, they're going to do a test on her and the doctors are going to say oh my god what are you doing that's that was the reality we wanted to focus on and we was trying to reduce down the size of a tumor she had a tumor in her armpit that at the time it was about the size of a golf ball and we did one session of just focusing on this exactly the same way as what you guys have just done and she went uh she obviously went back to the hospital and just after that one session it had gone down from a golf ball to about the size of a grape and the doctors said 
oh my God, what have you been doing? She had the exact experience that she'd been focused on. I mean, when, I, don't, I can't say that we would have cured her and got rid of it completely, because I do think, and she thought as well, that that was her time, and this was her way of checking out a physical reality to go on. She'd come here to do a certain job, she'd done it, it was time to progress on to the next stage. But she did have more chemo after that experience, but it didn't affect her at all. We told her body to tell the chemo that when it came in to kind of hold it and take it to where it was needed like a laser guided missile, not mess anything else up on the way. So the chemo was, was quite good. She was, she was pain free for the last couple of weeks of her life, um, but she didn't have all the side effects that she'd had before. So it meant that the last few weeks of her life, were, there was a bit more dignity there and a lot less pain and she spent the time with her kids. So it was nice to be able to do something like that, but I, I wouldn't even consider doing healing on a person without first doing a, the law of attraction for me and focusing on the possible outcome that I'm trying to achieve and hopefully talking to them about it as well because they are manifesting. If they don't believe it's going to work and they're manifesting that it won't work, then it could be the same, you know, that's, that's their reality they're creating and then we're fighting against that. So, hmm. any more questions? When's dinner? <laughs> yeah. Alright, thanks. Uh, if you want to come up and talk to me about any of this stuff, then please do, because I love talking about it. So.